I've got some mail here. I think we did a big box last day. Eh? Don't forget, I'll always give you links down below in the description if I can give you links for things. So don't forget to check those out. Well, I showed these before in another mail bag. This little power delivery module which allows you to see what's going out of it. Power delivery in, or just DC input. You have to make sure the DC input's sufficient to do the power delivery type you want to do, but um, USB-A and USB-C tells you what the voltage is and the current is cycles between them. And it's got a little indicator that tells you which one it's actually looking at at the time. I used one of these before, I tested it out. You can do three amps comfortably. It says five, but anything over 3.3 it struggled with. So I don't believe the five thing. Does quick charge 3.34 and so on. Some notes here about usage. That's the input voltage, you have to make sure that's enough. And that's what's on the outputs here. Don't know how good it is, I have to test this out and see how good it actually is. But it's the same sort of thing, just trying to find something I can use. But this is a power delivery one, so it negotiates. But you have to make sure the input voltage is sufficient to make sure the output voltage it must negotiate is capable. I don't think we have a phase of these things recently. I may never even use any of them. Who knows? A couple of cables. Okay, these are some high current, well these are 18 AWG, so higher current than standard. Uh, 2.5 by 5.5 millimeter type cable. I think that's 2.5. Might be 2.1, I don't remember. I can't which one it is. Sometimes 2.5s will fit in a 2.1 anyway. But these are one meter cables. I've got some of these before, they work quite well. It means you get this voltage drop being a bit more robust. And if you're trying to do higher currents, like you know, a couple of amps or so, then having a higher current rating on the cables is a good thing. Yeah, 18 AWG. So just a few more though, because I needed a couple more. And you always have spares. Not sure what this is gonna be. Do create. All oh, right, these are reviews for Banggood. So Banggood sent me these. So we're doing reviews on these things. These are both welders. So handheld welders for welding together, um, like battery packs, things like that. They call them a mash welder. Some information on the back there. Both slightly different. Let's see what's in here. Okay, interesting. Right. Collection of bits. Right. This is an electronic load. Now you're probably wondering why I got this because so I've already got electronic loads, and this one is obviously one of these Chinese variants, but they can do different things. So this has got USB-C loading on it and terminals like this. Uh, I don't know what the rating was on this. It's got Bluetooth on it as well. So it's got some connection cable options there. We've also got this other thing here. I've got like a full kit. It's kind of back to I was looking at USB C testers basically. And I found this thing. It's an adapter thing here with another load. I, I, there's no instructions that I could see. I'll have to go back and look at the listing. And AliExpress and see what it says, but some bolts there which were with that, weren't they? Yeah, they're with that. Chuck those back in there. Then we've got a adapter ball here. That plugs into here. So it'll go into there like that, and of course you tighten the screws down to lock it in place, and then you can plug in different USB ports and do testing with those. I thought it might be like a very convenient way of um, of doing some testing on tricky devices. I and mean, also I've got the signal electronic load up there, the proper signal load which I use and I've got the adapter ball here which I made up kind of, not great. Um, and I just hook onto these flying leads coming off there 
and plug chargers and whatever you in there to do testing on those. I'll use that normally, right? Well, I thought something like this might be useful because it does USB-C, which I can't really test very easily. So you've got that board. Also got this board, interestingly, which also goes in there. Your theory? Yep, there we go. Another board, different version. This one does power delivery. That's just USB-C only. And then we've got one that does batteries. You plug that one in there. So the battery testing, got all these different battery holders on there. It's nice. Um, I'm not sure what the story is of this piece. Ah, oh, hold on, it goes on here. It's got this piece. That's where it goes, it goes on there. Okay. Now we know, it goes on there. I don't know what's in here. It's thoroughly wrapped up in plastic, of course. Oh, right. Okay, that's somewhat bigger than I thought it was going to be. It's a battery tester mount for this. Wow. Um, so that goes in there too. Look at the size of this thing. I didn't think it was going to be that big. <laughs> so, you can also test batteries using this thing. Four wire connection. Yeah, four wire as well. So, interesting mount. Probably more of a thing suited to hobbyist. But the main thing I was looking at is a USB C, and I think I kind of got carried away when I saw it there. I thought, oh, I could get that, that could be useful. And you know, I don't get carried away if that just doesn't happen. <coughs> anyway, um, yeah, so that's what this is about. I'm not going to test it out right now. There's a bit going on here, isn't there? Quite a bit going on here. Needs a better storage system. I think we might have to get that cardboard box back. And then we had here some spanners. That's for these. Right. I think we're. Yep, yeah, that's it. That's what it bets. Go and follow the link for this thing. Find out more about it. I don't remember what it was. Software. Apparently it's got software as well. Scan a QR card to get software. Apparently, I don't know what wattage was thing was. It'll be listed somewhere. The old box is getting bigger. I get the feeling I'm going to run out of space on my desk. Not too exciting. Just a ton of cartridge for a brother printer. It's the 3465 or well, TN3465. I think this can do yeah 12,000 pages or something like that. So it's a really high yield ton of cartridge because we've got the HLL 6200DW. We've got that printer and it, we're really happy with it. It works really well. You have to keep it on top of the spares. It's been around for a while now that printer, so I'm a bit worried that maybe they're going to start discontinuing stuff soon. Hopefully. Might be anytime soon, but I don't know what kind of time frame they keep this thing supported for. So these are not Tony cartridges. These are drums, TR3415, so these are also for that printer. But the drums are horrendously expensive. These are about a quarter the price by getting aftermarket. I mean, you could say the same thing for the toner, but I've tried aftermarket toner and it just did not perform the same. There was no in there was good. And the drums, on the other hand, I've used aftermarket drum and it's been okay. A couple of them, I've had to replace a couple of times and I think it was about $70 each or something like that. $65 maybe each versus about four times that for one drum OEM. Toner cartridge just say hey, that's expensive. That's like $300 for that toner cartridge, something like that. And you can get the same sort of thing much cheaper aftermarket but in my experience the aftermarket ones just haven't worked the toners peeled off the pages and stuff like that whereas I've had no problems with the OEM stuff so unfortunately we paid them all for it anyway that's those not too exciting last thing the big box cut through the bloody tape there's a whole bunch of empty boxes in here too so you've got a bunch of empty boxes just uses packaging 
all down one side, which now I've got to dispose of. Here's the actual thing I want, but it's on one side of the box. So if I just bang the box on this end and drop this end of it, it wouldn't be protected at all. Anyway, so this is a Synology disk station. Now I already have a disk station. I've got a 418. This is a 923. The reason I've got this is because there's been some controversy recently with Synology. They want to tie everyone into using their own hard drives as of this year, as in 2025. So I think I've got a 95 model that comes out. That will be tied to Synology discs, not allowing you to use things like the Seagate, Iron Wolf, or whatever you may want to use. Um, and so I thought, right, I better get another one before this becomes a problem. So the NAS I've got right now is quite old. I've had it for seven years. So over the past couple of months, I've been thinking it's probably time to replace it. It's been in my mind that it's getting a bit old and it's kind of important that it doesn't fail. I decided to buy another one. People might say, oh, you know, if Synology is doing that and tying it in and doing basically DRM on the drives, then, you know, why would you buy them? Well, because I've been really happy with the Synology system. It works really well for me. Here's the back of it. Now, this can also have a optional card put in, which I haven't bought yet. I will be buying it. And that's a 10 gigabit card, so you can put, do 10 gigabit Ethernet on it. So I'm going to get that. And so it's a four bay and hot swappable drives. My current NAS doesn't have that. Synology NASs do have a history of flash failing. So I'm actually really tempted to pair it up, make sure it actually works, then dismantle it, remove the flash, back that up, and put it all back together again. Because if the flash fails, you ain't got a backup, or you can't get a copy of the flash from somewhere, you have a problem. You know, it's basically your NAS bricked, and that's the end of it. So I know that they do fail. I've had to repair NAS before. I've done one, was it a 216J, was it? I can't remember exactly what it was. There, a 218J? I think it's 218J. I've done a video on that, doing the flash on that one. Thankfully, I actually had two of the units, so I was able to copy the flash from the other one and use it as a basis to repair it. I only have one of these, and my existing NAS also doesn't have a flash backup. So I'm kind of in two minds right now, but whether I just basically do that, what I just said, and back that up, and then put it back away again in storage until my existing NAS fails. Or, if I swap it over right now, after doing the backup stuff, like I said, and getting this configured and running now, in case a future firmware update locks it to the Synology drives. Because right now, it will work with my drives. Probably a good idea to get it going. But if I wait a year or two or whatever it will take for my existing NAS to die, it might be a problem then. I don't know, I'm sort of mindful that I like to have a backup NAS. You know, I like my backups. But I don't need to use it yet. I'm not sure. Now, I think it comes with 4 gigabytes of RAM in it, and it can be expanded. There's Synology RAM, which you buy. It's expensive. I don't know if you can use other RAM. I need to research that more. The Synology RAM is like $300 for a single stick of 4 gigabytes or something. It's like, hmm, a bit on the high side. Whether I actually have to use that RAM or whether I can use a different RAM, just some other unbranded stuff, I don't know. Doing the flash on this is quite an important thing because I want to have a backup of the flash because when the flash does fail eventually, because they are known for it. I've seen videos on these ones, this particular unit having the flash fail, you know, having a backup of it is quite important. So let's go over there, up there somewhere, if you're not subscribed. I'm going to be able to watch down there. Patreon support link over there if you want to help me to buy, like, I don't know, a RAM stick for this thing or the 10 gigabyte Ethernet card. My network currently is only 1 gig anyway, but I like to feature proof. Eventually, I'm going to go faster. Anyway, catch you later.